Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to discuss the limitations of two categories of ratios namely liquidity ratios and profitability ratios and I thought I'd try to be a little creative with my explanation so I've tried to be a little clever and might end up looking silly but just bear with me this will make sense hopefully. Now so I mentioned two types of ratios, right? Profitability and liquidity. Now let's assume that this is an iceberg and this is a big ocean where the iceberg is traveling along. And this is the same iceberg that took down Titanic. Yes, it has survived. It took down the biggest ship in the world at the time. And this is the exact spot where Rose did not let Jack on the wooden plank. So let's assume this deadly iceberg represents our uh, profitability ratios. And when we talk about profitability ratios, we've talked about two types of margins. So when we talk about margins, there are two. One is your gross profit margin and the other one is your operating profit margin. And then we discuss something called return on capital employed, ROCE. So we've gone through three different types of profitability ratios. And what we're going to discuss today, what we're going to discuss today, is going to apply to all of these ratios. And w and the reason why I've picked an iceberg is because we know that when you talk about an iceberg, whatever you see above the water is only a small proportion, and there's still a lot that's hidden under the water that you cannot see. So you need to aware yourself of what's happening here before you can um, go into this area, do whatever. So. The underneath is what I want to figure out today with you guys. That what is it that limits the use of these probability ratios? And when we look at it, there are a few limitations and there's going to be four that we're going to discuss today, namely A, B, C, and D. And when we go through this one by one, it gives us a clearer picture of where profitability ratios fall short in giving you a clear analysis. So when we start with part A here. The first limitation that we find with profitability ratios is that you cannot compare profitability ratios across unrelated industries. So telecom against um, oil and gas would be an unfair fight, an unfair comparison, and therefore you have to remain within the same sector and compare the same sector or same type of business ratio for it to have true meaning for whoever is looking at it. Secondly, when we go towards B, this is where you have to understand that you, what you're doing is you're simply using formula from the data that you've collected, right? Your operating profit and revenue, for example, in operating profit margin. And whatever data is collected, your result is only going to be as good as the data that's been collected. Meaning that if there are any discrepancies, if there are any problems with the data that's been collected, then the eventual result is also going to be incorrect. So you have to make sure that whoever is doing this is trained and knows exactly what they're doing and the data that's been collected is correct and accurate in every way. <coughs> because since we're dealing with numbers here, part C leads to another problem, which is that Sometimes, and there is always margin for error, and sometimes if you have any miscalculations, that can obviously make the entire process invalid or just give you a wrong conclusion and you end up making the wrong decisions for the business. So you've got to take very good care in making sure that whoever is dealing with this has good handle on the number side of things. And then finally, after part C, of course, part D, and this is where we see a final limitation that when you lose probability ratios, that you cannot make any decisions based on simply the answers, right? They tell you a number and a percentage, but a number or percentage by itself does not hold any meaning. If I suddenly start the class or, or this video rather by saying 23%, you might ask me, okay, 23% is that from 22 to 23, which indicates a gain, or is it from 24 to 23, which indicates a decrease? So you have to have some meaning behind these numbers and being able to compare before being able to fully make decisions based on these numbers. So whenever you use these ratios, you have to keep these points in mind. And these are the things that help you to fully evaluate your understanding on profitability ratios, these limitations. Now, 
Welcome to iceberg number two. And this is not the same iceberg that took down Titanic. This was the one that was falling right behind it. So this one is an innocent looking iceberg. So this iceberg in this slide represents our liquidity ratios. And liquidity ratios, you will remember that we uh, discussed two of them. One of them was called your current ratio. And the other one was called your acid test ratio. Remember that acid test ratio is also called quick ratio, if you ever see that term. Now, similar to our profitability ratios iceberg, even this iceberg hides a few things under the water. And that's what we got to figure out, that what are the limitations of using liquidity ratios. Now, two of the limitations that we saw on profitability ratios also apply to liquidity ratios, which were that these ratios are only useful if you are using them in the same industry. So if you try to uh, compare unrelated industries, it's no good. And similar to profitability ratios, liquidity ratios also do not give you any decisions. They give you numbers, but you need more than numbers. You need context so that you can make more informed decisions. But there are a couple of things, a couple of limitations that are specific to liquidity ratios. And within liquidity ratios, you will remember that a big discussion point was inventory. Where the difference between current and asset test ratio is the amount of inventory. So it plays a vital role. And the problem with inventory is that there is no one stagnant amount. Inventory keeps changing over the year and this may change because you've ordered more and maybe sold more. So yeah, there's a different number or perhaps the supplier has decided to charge a higher price or they've given you a bulk discount. So it's lower. So value of inventories keep changing and because of that reason, your liquidity will keep fluctuating. And secondly, when it comes to val valuing your inventory, different businesses will have different methods of valuing inventory. You'll remember in our discussion that some do it on cost, some do it on net reliable value. There are other methods there. So when you look at two different uh, statements of financial position and statement of profit and loss, you may see that there's a value of inventories, but the way it's been calculated differs on the back end. So it, there are limitations, of course, but the benefits of using liquidity and profitability ratios greatly outweigh the limitations, but you can never completely forget about these limitations.